Friends, this is Wolfgang with the Healing Circle and Tools for Ascension. Today, let's uh, talk about another far out topic, and that is ET abductions. Uh, once uh, I, uh, you know, talked uh, with some friends, and uh, we talked about the Greys. You know, you know those little guys, those uh, gray aliens. Um, that are part of the UFO law, you know, with big black eyes. And uh, suddenly I felt um, this animal fear all around. I mean, very, very strong, pronounced fear. Uh, it was like a fear if somebody, you know, pulls a knife on you and, you know, it's just about to stab you, you know, it's just like... <laughs> Uh, and, you know, so I, I, of course, I checked that out and, you know, I uh, found uh, the person that was having that fear and uh, I told her that uh, most likely she had been uh, abducted by uh, Grace, you know, that would explain, uh, you know, that fear, you know, otherwise where should it come from? And uh, so uh, she... Uh, agreed uh, to a regression and so uh, you know I put her under you know through a hypnotic uh, regression through uh, basically a guided meditation and uh, then suddenly I noticed how my mind got scrambled you know I could not think clearly anymore and you know I uh, meditated at that time about three, four hours a day and, uh, you know, this does not happen to me. So I realized that, uh, you know, um, somebody, and I actually saw those little guys, you know, they were trying to prevent me to find out what was going on and, you know, I don't like that. So that's an infringement on my free will, you know, I have uh, free access, you know, to this information and that person has every right, you know, to know um, what was going on, you know, with her, especially when there was so much fear involved. Um, so, you know, I started a, a nice uh, mantra that invokes the uh, a wrathful aspect of a Hindu god. And actually it is uh, a wrathful aspect of God that protects the innocent. And so, you know, I was like halfway through the mantra and boy, my mind got scrambled again, and I have done this mantra for so many years, <laughs> about a decade. So uh, so I started over again, and uh, this time I only got through a quarter of a mantra, and then I started again, and I just got through a couple of words, and then I had it. I just, you know, pronounced the name of the deity, and boof, you know, I was through there, uh, you know, it's... Uh, they got scared, so they backed off. And uh, um, this, uh, my friend, uh, she, you know, became aware of uh, being lifted into this uh, room by this little grace, and she could not move. And uh, then, you know, very cold and mechanically, you know, they inserted some tubes into her navel and. Uh, as far as I remember, there was no anesthesia, and it was quite painful, and she was, you know, full of fear. I mean, it is kind of like uh, a lab animal uh, that is being dissected without having applied any anesthesia. And uh, so, yeah, basically, you know, she was, you know, treated like an animal, and then, you know, um, brought you know, back into her bed from which she had been abducted. And uh, so we just worked on releasing that fear, you know, that was definitely um, doing some damage uh, with her. And 
Um, well, this um, reminded me of when I was a little child. I wasn't even going to school, you know, I thought, hmm, the way we humans treat animals, you know, worse than slaves. We eat them, we, uh, you know, we do all kinds of, you know, bad, really bad things with them, and uh, we justify this by uh, just being smarter than they are, you know, and that's all justification. <laughs> well, some people even, you know, quote the Bible that we are supposed to rule the earth, but uh, I never imagined that it would be in, in, in this way. So, you know, and I thought, hmm, I hope that there are not beings that are smarter than us and, you know, treat us like we treat the animals. And, well, actually, in this case, um, you know, these greys uh, were treating us like animals. But I'm not uh, actually um, just... Um, let's say uh, putting judgment on on the whole race here you know that is uh, never correct I have found and I actually had another experience uh, with that race and many uh, years ago there was this uh, Roswell anniversary and MTV uh, decided to uh, make a video about that and uh, I was hired to do a regression on a Washington inner city kid that claimed that he had been abducted as a child and, you know, he was actually uh, composing music, you know, to those uh, abductees. Uh, he had a pretty good relationship uh, with them. And uh, so uh, I, I, I showed up and they had a whole truck <laughs> Uh, full of video gear and they gave me the monster light. I mean, I'm coming from the video production field myself and you know, they gave me the a light that you know, makes you appear like like that <laughs> Very spooky. So, you know, they definitely did not take that whole thing very seriously and uh, But anyhow, so I, I regressed that uh, young man and uh, sure enough, uh, he uh, was lifted at night, you know, out of his bed into a, a spacecraft and uh, brought into a brightly uh, lit room and he was being examined and he uh, was like an eight-year-old boy and uh, he was not uh, traumatized at all. Uh, this seemed to be a nightly affair for him because he, he complained most of the time, oh my god, you know, here I am again, I'm going to be so tired at school, I always get in trouble at school for being so tired, you know, uh, I would like to sleep. <laughs> and they just uh, kept him uh, up and, you know, prodded around on him. Uh, but uh, it did not seem in, in a bad way, they examined him in, in this and that way, and he described it from the perspective of an eight-year-old boy. And I've worked with a lot of talent actors, and I kind of have a good idea of what good acting is and what bad acting is, and uh, this uh, young man was not an actor. I mean, he did not act. That was completely genuine. I mean, there was, he was definitely in the persona of an eight-year-old boy. And uh, so I asked him to describe uh, what he saw around him, if there was anybody else, and what well, he described the, uh, uh, you know, there were three gray aliens, you know, but one of them, one of him, you know, the head scientist, you would say, uh, he knew him and he had a relationship with him, you know, he felt as if that uh, person cared for him. And, um, you know, there was a connection with him uh, there, and then he, I, and he still had that connection in his uh, older persona. And he also uh, described a male and female uh, Nordics, how that's how they're called, you know, beautifully built, like, uh, you know, the ideal human in those uh, skin-tight uh, leotards. And he also described uh, a military man, U.S. military person, 
and you know I questioned that again and yeah I mean he was very sure that this was a US military person because he he was an army brat himself so he knew how they looked like and uh, I asked them you know what the relationship of those people to each other were and it seemed like you know the greys were the scientists the underlings the uh, Nordics they were in charge and they were kind of treating the American army guy with uh, disdain they looked down on him they did not like him you know I, I think it was more like a moral judgment um, than like a racist uh, judgment uh, the way this was described and so they left him alone and I suggested that uh, you know this uh, boy to this boy then you know to explore the spaceship and he got up and got to a door and opened the door and uh, you know he saw a flying saucer somewhere in a hangar and then at that same time we both got a split in headache <laughs> And uh, we uh, finished uh, the uh, regression. Um, you know, it uh, was no need, you know, to uh, to fight through that. Uh, you know, we had seen enough. You know, there was uh, plenty of footage uh, that we got, and well, the MTV stuff was <laughs> definitely very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> they thought, you know, that this was some. Uh, New Age googly stuff and now they were extremely respectful after that you know they could see that uh, was not a hocus-pocus um, so uh, personally you know I also have experience um, coming to a, a huge huge um, starship and I, I felt home there I have to say I, I never really <laughs> feel at home here on the earth planet but uh, it does not mean that I had many incarnations here on, on this planet uh, but you know there my first impression was I am home and the first thing I did I, I levitated <laughs> ah that felt so good and uh, it was uh, the whole place was so beautifully landscaped you know I could uh, dive in uh, grottos you know filled with beautiful water and uh, you know it just was was wonderful and um there are probably many of you uh you know that of those guys of you that see this video now that have uh, similar feelings you know either you know you have a great fear uh when you talk about uh, ufos and uh, grace or if you see a picture of those and that's probably an indication that you have been abducted and uh, that you are terrified about this and that you are carrying trauma and I strongly advise you uh, to uh, get a regression and to release that trauma. If that trauma is not uh, being released uh, it's probably going to lead um, to all kinds of diseases you know um, plus probably emotional disturbances so um, you know I'm available you know to help you um, through this and uh, but also you know if you feel out of place here <laughs> on this uh, planet and um, you have a feeling that you are like a star seed um, or you know you're really into sci-fi and that's pretty much the only thing that you like in literature you know there are all kinds of indications that you are not from this planet and it would be also be very very interesting for you you know to find out about your origins and you know that is another reason to uh, have a regression uh, with me and uh, we can you know find out what your mission is uh, maybe we can activate you for your mission uh, you can get mission briefings and you know we hook you up you know with your star people you know with the culture that you come from and uh, establish uh, certain pro communications protocols you know uh, how to get in contact with them you know how to work maybe your chakras or to do certain types of meditations or you know certain types of symbols pop into your mind or you know your right leg tingles whenever they want to talk to you 
you know, all kinds of protocols can be established. And, uh, you know, you will, uh, um, you know, know, you will know what is going on and uh, you will know about your mission, uh, not just having some vague feelings. Um, like always, you know, this is uh, Wolfgang uh, with Tools for Ascensions. I hope uh, this information was helpful. I uh, can be contacted uh, via um, email if you want to set up a Skype session or a telephone session. I work on a love donation basis. And um, hmm, love and light, Starhoppers unite. Namaste.